So I basically went out there to like support my people and then videotape and show what's actually going on. I went to the protests because I felt obligated as like a photographer and videographer that I needed to document it. And I'm also just really passionate about Black Lives Matter. If the politicians are only going to understand bodies in the street, people showing up to make a stand, that's, I wanted to be a part of that. Never really went out and did the activist life. Um, this is pretty much my first time, but I'm a documentarian at heart. Like I think a shooter is a shooter. Once a shooter, always a shooter, right? And when I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna get the best shots I can get. And like when I get there, I see like black people, brown people, white people, like yellow people, purple people, people with like green hair, people with yellow hair. You know, I've never been to a protest before, but I can tell you what I've been to before. I was at the Philly riots when the Phillies won. I was very relieved that they were observing social distancing. There were uh, so many people who were handing out masks, provisions, water. Like it was good, good vibes like at the beginning. We were marching for hours when we got to 676. And everybody just walked around the police peacefully down onto 676. And I was like, oh, where are they? Oh, they're walking down. Oh, if we're walking down, I'm walking down because I'm getting that shot, right? When I was on there, I didn't feel that we were in danger because all of the, the vehicles were at a standstill. I mean, there was at least 1,500 people there, maybe a couple thousand. You know, I don't know. I wasn't looking from the skies. I was there. But then they said that we were like, pulling people out of cars, and like, I have video of it. Like, nobody was doing anything like that. It speaks for itself. You don't have to come ask, ask me a question. You don't have to come, go oh, try to get me all riled up for anything. No, no, no. People were getting out of their cars, either giving high fives, holding up their fists. Nobody was destroying anything. Nobody was getting pulled out their cars. They were just Sabrina Taylor, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter. The chants didn't even have profanities. Um, it, it was kind of a bog standard protest. So there's the state trooper vehicle that I'm pretty sure was in the article that they said was getting, like people were standing on or people were pushing back and forth or destroying or what, what, just, just watch it for a second and like tell me where anybody's pushing on that car. I didn't see anybody attack any police vehicle. There was an extremely upbeat attitude. Obviously it was somber because we were chanting the names of murder victims. Otherwise it was almost identical to almost every other protest that I've been to. The protest on I-676 may seem like extreme to some people, but we were safe. And it wasn't until the police fired gas that I felt like I was in danger. The armored vehicle, meanwhile, is coming south on 21st Street. And I think as a knee-jerk reaction, we got down on our knees, we all put our hands up. I was on the very first line of this between the armored vehicle and the crowd of people the armored vehicle fires tear gas directly at us. They also fired it at people on either sides, folks that were not on the street. They were shooting indiscriminately. 22nd, there was like an overpass and it got like super dark. And like, I just see people sprinting back. And like some dude next to me is like, yeah, you know what's going on? I was like, dude, I have no idea. I have no idea. It was a stampede. And then I hear tear gas, tear gas, tear gas. And then I kind of ducked between two cars because there was just a stampede of people. I was like, I'm going to get hurt. A lot of people drop down on their knees, don't shoot. Like, we're just doing our thing, peaceful protest. And then everyone starts running because we're now getting tear gassed and shot at with like pepper bullets. Not even necessary. It wasn't like we went down there and like tore apart. They fired them like next to civilian vehicle. So like people who are sitting on the highway are now getting tear gassed and they don't even have anything to do with it. Like they're just on the highway. And that's when I started seeing some tear gas. Like the, the crowd was going up an embankment, which was like an uphill incline and right on the road I saw some smoke and I hear I heard somebody yell tear gas and so I had I had goggles on and I put a scarf around my mask and they were firing tear gas from the back side and then they started firing tear gas from the front side we started you know going up the incline and there was still like I, I think I saw at least two to three uh, tear gas rounds land within 10 feet of me 
I have photos of somebody actually picking it up. And like the only way you could get out of that because it's a solid wall of concrete, 30 feet high with a fence, people looking down. And then there's the embankment, but on this side of the embankment, it's completely solid fence. The violence and the protest seem to begin in concurrently in two prongs. First, right after the tear gas was uh, deployed to the protesters on the overpass, the, they scattered and the armored vehicle was able to take the on-ramp onto 676. Almost immediately, us on the overpass started hearing screams, really horrible screams coming from below us, and those were the protesters on 676. I see this one dude run up and starts throwing canisters back, and then like, they fired more. I saw a lot of people just struggling to get up the hill, and um, there was a lot of fear, a lot of confusion. Because they're having fun. They're enjoying it. Like, there's, like, it's literally a fenced off area. Like, you literally see people, like, helping Jessica, who works at Starbucks, up over a fence, who literally can't breathe, they can't see, and you guys literally just, hey, they can't go anywhere. Let's just make it worse. And the police were kettling us out through, you know, a gap in a fence. <laughs> and I have asthma. It's already hard to breathe through a mask. And then like once there's tear gas and like all that other stuff involved and you're trying to run up a hill and you're trying to get people over a fence, like it's just like super hard to breathe. I start like vomiting. <laughs> I'm starting to fear for my life because like we're literally like, like there are people that climb on top of people. As we were retreating, they were still firing tear gas on us. And eventually, after we got out of the embankment and we were on Benjamin Franklin Parkway. All right, they're definitely shooting at us now. I saw people treating each other, you know, as medically best they could. And then more tear gas was shot into that crowd. I was on the street over there. They're still tear gassing people right now. It's probably one of the most frightening things that ever happened. I hopped up, I lifted myself, and because I was like helping other people try and get over, I dropped back down. And I look at this dude, and he looks back at me, like, and just unspoken, like, he reaches his arm over. I grab his arm, I jump, and like, he grabbed me with his other arm and just pulled me down. And the helicopter started coming over with like the sound dispersing noise. Just like a siren. And at the end of that siren, one, two, three be fired off. So we weren't getting shot from two spots. We were getting shot from everywhere. There was a helicopter that was circling and coming extremely low. It seemed like it was trying to, to spook us a little bit by coming all the way down until you could feel the, the motion of the propellers on the way. And I've never seen anything like this in my entire fucking life, never. And it wasn't only that. Then, then when the SWAT teams came out on the ground, they were pulling out mace. You're talking about thousands of people getting herded into like a corner, and they're still trying to get away. Like I went out there just to see what was going on, and they just proved that like everything that they put out there is all fake. Uh, they're firing at us. What the fuck? Yes, they're firing directly at us. Yo, back away from the fence. Uh, buses showed up. Uh, on the street that they had cleared on 21st Street to go down the on-ramp onto 676 to arrest people. Sure, like, I've gotten in my car, like, I put my backpack in, took off my mask, like, called my girlfriend, I was like, yo, I'm done, I'm safe, I'm all right. And, like, I literally pull around the corner, and I was like, well, well these are just, I'm just gonna follow them out, because, like, I'm trying to get out the city. They fired canisters through tear gas at, like, five random civilians standing on a corner waiting for the light to change. Like, we're not even near the protest. At this point, like I have my windows down, like it's dead silent. Like they're just having fun with it at this point. When I was walking home that day, I was in tears, partially from the tear gas, but also because I thought the police will let you protest as, as long as you're not protesting the police. My great grandfather, Robert Cornelius Nix, was like the first black Supreme Court justice 
and my family's got like a good lineage with like civil rights and protesting and doing things in Philly. Like this should be handled in like a totally different way. None of us were armed. We had cloth face masks. Like this is what spandex? Like I don't know. Like you're arrested and you can't get to your inhaler and you've been sprayed with tear gas and like you're you literally can't breathe. Like I can't imagine what's going through people's heads. From protesting for so long in the city, you come to expect a certain arc to the story. You show up, you march, you chant, and you go home. Sometimes you think that your ask is concrete enough that you can actually get it, and you stay until you get it, like we saw with the ICE protests two years ago. I could understand, like, if they may be like, formed a line and then like slowly hurried us off the highway, which I'm pretty sure they could have done because like everybody put their hands up and they're just like, just don't shoot. Like there are people getting off the highway before they even started shooting. I don't think any of us deserved the treatment we got. The huge part of protest is disruption and making a statement. We were not posing a threat. We were on our knees, our hands were up. And this was a watershed to see my friends and my fellow Philadelphians brutalized. If you're not happy that I went down there and you think I deserved it, that's your opinion and you're completely entitled to it. I'm not here to change your opinion. I'm just here to say, maybe you should reevaluate some things and educate yourself and like be better humans, you know? I'm like you can't just end a systematic thing by asking nicely, you have to, to do something and, and annoy some people. <laughs> if you want to get out there and protest and do it peacefully, I suggest you get out there and protest and do it peacefully. If you don't want to protest and do it peacefully, like I suggest you start reading some books and get your history together because like everybody's in the fight now. No peace!